Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor with O'Reilly, and I'm joined today by Paco Nathan, who is the director of data science for Concurrent in the Bay Area. And we are here today to talk about test-driven development, or TDD, and big data, which on the balance sort of sounds like an odd proposition. You, um, you know, you've got sort of a, a square peg round hole problem, and when it seems to me, when you're talking about something like test-driven development and big data. So talk to me a little bit about how those two things actually fit together. Certainly. Uh, thank you, Courtney. Um, yes, definitely. When people are developing big data apps, I, I, I think that um, unit tests and test-driven development are, are uh, probably the last thing you expect to hear in the conversation. Um, usually you're worried about scalability and uh, trying to troubleshoot through, you know, terabytes or petabytes of data. And usually it's a matter of um, trying to get the apps working efficiently as opposed to using more TDD kinds of, of approaches towards development. Um, so there's a, a unique set of features in the cascading API uh, where we've worked out um, something much like a data exception. So whereas there will be a, a stack uh, control flow kind of exception in languages like Java or Python when you're developing other applications, um, the idea here is to be able to use a couple of features, uh, stream assertions and traps, to define exceptional data patterns and what to do, what kind of business rules to apply when those get encountered at scale. So, so let me just stop you there for a second um, and back up a little bit on cascading um, because I think you know people who are familiar with other languages and test-driven development might you know get some of what you're talking about. The things you're talking about with cascading in terms of, of assertions and traps are a little different. Um, maybe you could talk a bit about how cascading works in general and sort of this metaphor of plumbing that, that runs throughout. Certainly. Um, cascading is uh, an abstraction layer on top of how do you been and other kinds of uh, data frameworks, big data frameworks. So the idea is that uh, developers work with a metaphor that's a lot like plumbing. Uh, you're defining data pipelines. And so literally in, in the sense of the API, we, we work with um, pipes that connect data sources to data sinks. And then there's different types of, of filters and joins and, and uh, traps and, and uh, plumbing kinds of, of notions that happen as operations along those pipelines. So on one hand, it's it's a bit like using functional programming paradigm inside of a Java API. Um, on the other hand, it, it's also really good for being able to visualize a large data workflow and be able to work through um, the, the visual representation to try to troubleshoot problems. So I, I want to come back to the functional pro programming stuff because I think we're going to, I want to talk a little bit more about closure and, and cascading how that stuff fits together. But um, it, you know the plumbing metaphor is interesting to me in particular. My sort of semi-limited knowledge of test-driven development, how that works, is you you have you have your requirements for what you want, and then you sort of prove it to fail, you, yeah. right? And then you go back and and you fix that until you're not proving to fail anymore. So, which is always it's always struck me sort of counterintuitive. But when you have something like like a, a plumbing metaphor, I mean, you really already have your sort of architectural diagram, right? And your requirements figured out up front. Is, would you say that's an appropriate way of looking at it? Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good way to, to describe it. Um, yeah, with test-driven development, you usually you, you state uh, your requirements of, of what you want to have accomplished, and then you show that your current code doesn't accomplish that. Um, and you, you, know, you demonstrate that the test fails, and then you code towards it and demonstrate that it, your test has passed once your new code is put in. So the idea is you can't really state that a program is correct, but you right. can enumerate a lot of cases where it's incorrect and then disprove that, that those actually hold. Um, so with the plumbing metaphor and working with, like I say, uh, terabytes or petabytes of data, um, the way that, that this is approached in cascading is to start out from the input and sort of build the pipelines um, from the initial points outward. So you start out with what you believe is in or, or you know what you consider to be the format of your input, um, and there may be a lot of surprises, especially at large scale. But you start uh, enumerating the different patterns, uh, regular expressions, regexes that you expect to see out of your input, and then um, asserting those. That's what we call stream assertions. And if anything doesn't pass the regex, then it gets trapped into uh, another file, 
an exception, a case of uh, different exceptions that you want to go and review, perhaps write more code for them, or you know, perhaps it's just bad data that you need to, to clean. Um, so the idea is that as you build out your pipeline step by step, you're adding more and more patterns at every stage. Um, and these are asserting how you expect the program to work, how the, the data flow is supposed to look. By the time you get to the end of the pipeline, um, you have a set of test coverage already. Very cool. So maybe walk me through how you'd approach a project, you know, a little more specifically um, with this approach in mind. Certainly. So, um, you know, I have a, a four step process that I usually go through in defining an app this way. Um, so start out from, again, just reading the raw input data. So building an app that will just do one thing, read that input. And then from there, um, assert essentially a, a post condition for my first chunk of processing. I'll, I'll read the input data and do some kind of transform on it. And so now I've got a unit test defined. I've got a bit of code already implemented. And then number three, um, I, I validate that, um, you know, that, that the app will fail that stream assertion um, without the new code put in. Um, and then turn it on and make sure that it runs correctly. And then I, I number four, I keep coding on through the workflow until I've got it all implemented. But again, looking at it in chunks and applying the stream assertion state each chunk. Okay, so I'm going to jump around a little bit. Uh, this is where my brain is going with this and ask, um, you know, in other conversations I've had with you, we talk about big data and, um, you know, the, the kinds of applications, the kind of organizations that are doing this. So talk to me a little bit about who's actually implementing this kind of a, an approach with test driven development. Certainly. Um, you know, the three biggest verticals that we've seen in use cases are in finance, transportation, healthcare, typically kinds of uh, risk aversive businesses where you want to make sure you get the data right and you don't propagate some kind of failures downstream. Um, now, it, in terms of, of companies, um, we've also seen really large deployments at Twitter, uh, Etsy, eBay, uh, Nokia, and kind of go down the list, but a lot of those are in Scala, Scalding and Closure, Haskell. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you've taken us back to some place I, I said I'd get us to, which is great. Um, so talk to me a little bit more about, about um, in terms of using the, the closure, D closure DSL and Casca log and, and, and how that's really well matched in particular for doing this kind of test driven development. The, um, the Casca log side of it, I think, in my opinion, it's the more advanced use cases for cascading. Um, it's very interesting with respect to test driven development. Because in, in Cascalog, um, that DSL is, is based on an earlier language called Prolog. And so uh, Cascalog is, has been developed at Twitter. It was actually developed by a company called Backtype, which Twitter acquired. And it's used a lot in their publisher analytics. Um, th the thing that's interesting is that um, the basis for Cascalog is something called data log. And in data log, you're stating uh, essentially logical propositions of uh, what you expect to see in the data. And you treat these as subqueries, and then you compose the different subqueries together to build your app. Um, now, this has an interesting implication for TDD, because in, in TDD, you, you state what your requirements are, you, not so much how to achieve something, but rather what is required to be achieved. Right, and and that I mean, just as an aside, that sort of reminds me a bit of how Puppet works, right? I mean, you're just trying to get a certain yes. outcome. You don't care about how you get there. Exactly, it's it's um, you see a very declarative style of programming in Cascalog, uh, and in fact, the order of the subqueries it's not particularly sensitive to that. You can rearrange them, but the set of them taken together define how the queries are going to work, what needs to be done in terms of joins, and a lot of that's taken care of under the hood. Um, so it's really interesting because you can go in and, and define and, and, and uh, test um, ad hoc queries when you're just working with the raw data, but from that actually build up your app and have your test pretty much created, um, defined in line, um, you know, at the point that you've, you've completed your app. Um, we definitely see a, a large reduction in the volume of code when you compare Casper log side by side with SQL, it's about 10 to 1. Oh. And um, and the gist of that is really you're, you're focusing on stating the requirements as opposed to stating all the mechanisms. Um, there's a there's a phrase that we use to describe this in the Casper community. Um, basically, specify what you require, not how to achieve it. 
what you require, not how to achieve it. Gotcha. Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, so just, you know, sort of to wrap up one last question for anybody who might be interested in, in kind of looking into this or getting started, how, you know, what do you recommend the best way for somebody to, to, you know, sort of dip their toes in here? Certainly. Well, there's, there's some really great articles by, uh, one of the engineers at Twitter, Sam Ritchie, who added, uh, the Midge package. It's, it's from Clojure, but he in integrated that with Cascalog. And, um, there've been some, um, excellent posts that he's had as far as how to approach um, facts and mocks and other types of artifacts for test-driven development in Cascalog. Um, and with that also, they've developed a, a framework for uh, fault-tolerant workflows um, inside of Cascalog. Um, it, it has automated checkpoints, um, other features which are really handy for very fault-tolerant apps. So I, I definitely recommend his writings. Excellent. I'll get a little plug in for you too, though. Um, you are writing a book <laughs> on cascading for us here at O'Reilly. Um, and there's a chapter in there for people who will might be interested in that on test driven development um, and, uh, and cascading and big data as well. So um, that's it for today. I just want to say thanks for joining us. Thank you.